Oh, hello. How's it going? Yeah, um, hi. This is a little, uh, a little embarrassing. Sorry, let me just get a little, a little shadow covered, covered thing over. I can't, I can't get it covered. That's fine. Um, hi, everyone. Hello. It's your favorite neighborhood pierogi. Um, I am, uh, I'm an author. Um, that's what that says. A little blurry, but that is what that says. I am an author. And I say that because I finally finished the book that I've been working on for several years. Um, very excited. It's not published, but it is a complete first draft. Um, it's this many words, this many chapters. Um, took a very long time to work on. Um, but I wanted to make this video because uh, I had some thoughts about the entire process of working on things. Hello, Bela. Things that I thought were very helpful for me to realize as I was going through this over the past, like, not quite a year. Um, and I just wanted to share those those thoughts with people who might also be struggling with getting their first draft of a book done. Um, so, yeah, let's hop, let's just get into it. Um, so five things I learned from writing this book. Uh, number one, time is an illusion. Um, I started this particular story in July of 2016. Um, so I would have been 22 at that time, a senior in college. Um, I'm going to be 30 this year, which is just a fantastic thought to think about 30 year old Kyle. Um, but yeah, this has been a project eight years in the making for this particular story. I've got another series of stories that I've been working on for even longer, and I'm just now getting onto those. But you know what? It doesn't matter. I've been very on and off with this, this story in particular over the last eight years. Um, and I honestly didn't think it was ever going to be finished. And that doesn't really feel good when you're beating yourself up over the fact that you're not getting work done on something that you really want to get done. But, uh, you know, once I stopped worrying about the fact that, um, it was sitting in my, you know, my Google Docs for so long and just actually finally started working on it and getting myself into the grind of working on it, I don't like that word. Once I actually started just kind of focusing on it and getting it done and not giving myself a time frame where I felt like I needed to get it done, it was a lot easier to actually work on it and get it done. Number two, uh, getting outside of your normal writing space really helps get to get things written down. I don't have a lot to say about this because it's kind of exactly what it says on the tin. Um, I figured out that I basically can't write if I'm at home. Uh, so actually going out multiple times per week for several months, spent so much money on coffee, uh, got me into a space where I could actually focus on the work, which also goes into number three, which is that writing groups are actually surprisingly helpful for focusing, at least for me. I haven't worked with a writing group since college. I have been very resistant to working with writing groups uh, because I have that experience working with college writing groups. Um, and the attitudes that come with college writers. They're not fun to be around, but luckily this group that I found, and I haven't been able to go to it because I've moved since then, but I found a group through Meetup that was super chill. They met once a week on Thursdays at a little cafe, and the whole focus was just on getting coffee and writing and hanging out for dinner and drinks afterwards. So this one didn't do any like peer editing or like any sort of like group consultation or anything as an official function of the group. I think there were some people who worked kind of individually outside of the group for peer editing, but I personally liked that. I don't like writing groups where you're expected to share your work and get feedback and give feedback. If that's your thing, you might want to look for a group that does that. But point being, I found a group that does not do that and I thought it was really helpful for me to just have those like-minded people around to help me kind of keep myself accountable. Number four. Self-editing is not the total momentum killer that I've been told it is. A lot of times people will tell you don't edit your work as you're writing it. I think that is good advice for the most part. I think there is something to be said for using roadblocks to your advantage. 
And what I mean is that rather than like focusing or agonizing on every sentence to make sure it's perfect, just for example, I was hitting walls every so often where Every so often, I was hitting walls where I just could not figure out how to go forward with the story. That could be just me not knowing how to like write a scene or what what sentence to write for like dialogue or you know whatever. But rather than staring at the page and just trying to like brute force my mind, like trying to force my way through that block, I actually used that time to go back, reread everything that I'd written up to that point, kind of seeing how I got to where I was, you know, checking how characters had acted, what they had said, things they might have uh, told another character or done, you know, just all that sort of stuff. And I used that time re like rereading everything to tighten things up, and in a lot of cases found that what I had written up to the point where I got stuck wasn't giving me a viable avenue to actually continue with the story. You know, I would go back, I would restructure certain story beats uh, or parts of different chapters. There were a couple chapters where I just completely moved things around, kind of condensed some things, and even rewrote a couple of just entire sections of chapters or entire chapters themselves so that they would just flow better and make just make more sense. And that allowed me ultimately to find a way to more organically get things moving again. So self-editing, you shouldn't go too crazy with it, but there is some value in going back when you get stuck and rereading and figuring out how and why you got stuck. Finally, number five, it's okay to not be happy with everything that you've written down. A lot of people say that the first draft is supposed to be bad. While I don't think that's a totally correct statement, the core idea that the first draft will not be perfect absolutely is correct. There are going to be spots that don't flow as well or make as much sense as other parts, and that's totally okay. Your first draft is a prototype. Uh, you know, you're putting things on the page to figure out if what you have conceptualized is gonna work together and get where it, where you ultimately want it to go. And some of the parts in that prototype are gonna work really well and some of them just aren't. And that's not a bad thing because frankly, getting those things in a model that you can then kind of, you know, actually go in and edit, having it on the page where you can go and modify it rather than just having it up in your head, agonizing over like whether it's going to be bad or not when you write it, it's really helpful to be able to actually like physically like modify things that have been written down. Point being, don't stop yourself from writing just because you think it's going to be bad. It may be bad, it may be really good. And if it's not really good, it'll eventually get to be really good. You just have to do the work to get it there. So yeah. Those are my ramblings on this whole thing. Um, I don't know if this book is ever going to get published, but it's done. So I'm going to be working on that, doing some edits, hopefully get people to read it. If it does ever get published, uh, you know I'm going to be celebrating on here and everywhere, ev everywhere else. I'm, I'm not going to shut up about it. It's You will know. So yeah, um, happy May the 4th. Um, and good writing.